Today on SPG1 Tactical, I give you eight tips on how to appendix carry. Appendix carry is, in my opinion, one of the most optimal ways to carry a handgun concealed. And if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you're either considering carrying using this method, or you've tried it and found it difficult. As an instructor, I found that questions about how to appendix carry are quite prevalent when it comes to new shooters or new concealed carry permit holders. So here are eight tips on how to appendix carry more comfortably and with less printing. Number one, don't try to conceal more gun than you can handle. This is body shape dependent, but trying to fit a full size handgun down your pants just isn't logical. I'm still trying to figure out how the Jack Nicholson Joker did it in Batman. For my personal body type, I found that the largest size I would consider in carrying is around a Glock 19. I've recently switched to something smaller just to be that much more comfortable and easier to conceal. But with modern advances in magazine capacities, Glock 43 variants, Sig P365s, and Smith & Wesson's shields are very worthy of consideration. Number two, make sure you have a solid and sturdy belt preferably designed for concealed carry. Your belt is the connection point between your holster and your body. A looser flimsy belt will not be as comfortable, cause the gun to dig into you, possibly print, and not always provide a consistent grip as it may shift. The current belt that I'm running is the Nextbelt EDC Titan Precise Fit Gun Belt, which also has a ratchet system that allows me to make micro adjustments as necessary. Number three, try moving your belt buckle to the side. I did a quick tip video on this not too long ago, which actually led me to making this video. Most people are conditioned to wear their belt buckle front and center, but this just creates extra bulk and takes up space where you're trying to carry your gear. So consider moving your buckle to one side or the other. This will make things more comfortable and help not to print. Number four, positioning. Again, this is body dependent, but I find that placing the barrel of the firearm in my inguinal canal area, which is the V line from your abdomen to your groin area, is the most comfortable. This is approximately the 1230 to one o'clock position. Direct center, I'm fighting with my pants button and zipper, and I find it pushes on my pubic bone and is just uncomfortable. Further out by the two o'clock area makes bending my leg feel awkward. The inguinal line provides a nice crease for that barrel to have space when the legs are retracted. Shift to Shore, or S2S, was founded way back in the yesteryears of the late 80s. I know some of you right now are saying that that was about two years ago, but it's really almost 40. So for almost half a century, Shift to Shore has provided corrosion and rust protection solutions for one of the harshest environments in the world, the big blue salty ocean. Specializing in the maritime industry, S2S has been helping seafaring professionals maintain their boats, ships, cranes, and more. Now, capitalizing on this long-standing expertise, they are providing a phenomenal solution for the firearm industry. Utilizing the latest in chemical engineering, S2S has developed a 5-in-1 gun lubricant that cleans, lubricates, and protects like we're all familiar with, but also polar bonds to aluminum and steel. This means that it actually penetrates into the metal, creating a barrier that helps to push existing rust out and prevent new rust from forming. This barrier also helps to reduce carbon buildup, meaning that your firearm will stay cleaner and running better for longer, especially if you're shooting suppressors. And if that weren't enough to float your boat, pun intended, it's non-toxic. So for those of you with little ones running around, human or fur baby, you don't have to worry as much about them getting a hold of it. Now S2S and SPG1 Tactical have teamed together to bring this amazing product to you, the firearm owner, and they've given me the opportunity to pass on savings to you. Right now, if you go to s2sgunlube.com, there will be an automatic 10% SPG1 Tactical discount applied in cart at checkout. And through this website, you get the discount on all products, not just the gun lube. So if you have anything that requires corrosion or rust protection or lubrication, head over to their site and pick some up.
s2sgunlube.com. Number five, size up your pants if needed. Granted, I don't wear skinny jeans, but if you're trying to shove a one to one and a quarter inch thick gun down your pants, that will increase the circumference of your waistline. And if your pants are tight to begin with, it's gonna cause constriction around your waist that won't feel comfortable. So if you're on the tight side of say a size 34, consider purchasing and trying a 36. Just keep in mind that not all pants companies or even the same style of pant are always the same actual size. So be sure to try them on before purchasing. Number six, make sure you use a quality holster. My general suggestion is to go with a nice Kydex holster with a claw attachment to keep the gun closer to your body. Make sure that the holster isn't too bulky and doesn't have any sharp edges. That should be pretty self-explanatory why. I don't begrudge people who like leather holsters, just understand that you need to keep an eye out on the upper leather because it will eventually wear down and possibly become loose. This then becomes a safety problem with the leather having the potential to get in the trigger guard when reholstering. Number seven, modify your holster if needed. Again, everybody's body style is different and nothing says that you have to keep your equipment in its stock configuration. You can add some crafting foam to soften it up, duct tape if needed, sand any sharp bits down, or purchase something like a wedge from Tier 1 Concealment that provides a foam pad as well as a cant of the gun towards your body. I've even seen someone put tape a washcloth to their holster to make it more comfortable. Nobody even should be seeing it in public anyways unless you need to draw your firearm. So its beauty isn't as important as its comfort and functionality. Unless you're worried about the Instagrams. The big consideration is to make sure any modifications that you do change, that it doesn't negatively impact the safe and unimpeded drawing of the gun or expose the trigger while holstered. Number eight, wear an appropriate shirt. No spandex or smediums, people. And shirts that have patterns will help break up any lines or shadows that would otherwise be caused by your concealed weapon. There's a reason that plaid is so popular in the tactical community, but it doesn't have to be that strong of a pattern. Simple stripes or shirts with graphics on them can help conceal it as well. Layers also help break up any bulging areas. Bonus tip, don't overly or aggressively stipple your grip. This just makes it sandpaper against your skin and also catches your shirt, causing it to snag or put holes in it. Aggressive stippling or talon tape is great for duty or competition guns, but not so much for concealed carry. And there you have it. Eight simple tips to being able to appendix carry concealed with more comfort and less printing. If you have any questions or input, throw them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Make sure to like and subscribe as I've got plenty of videos in the queue coming along and it greatly helps the channel. And I've placed the links to S2S Gun Lube and the book that I helped to co-author, The Six Bullets You Can't Leave Home Without, in the comment section. Also head on over to Facebook and Instagram for our other social media pages for content not uploaded to YouTube. And until next time, stay safe, stay smart, and stay tactical, my friends.